it's Jackie making my week 11 part a pre no week 11 part a pre discussion vlog response discussion vlog <laughs> um so picking questions uh post reading editing all that stuff first person's question is Laura's um, you hear footsteps in the hallway between Uche's room and that of Nasoon, your daughter. Nasoon, your daughter. Pages 16 to 17. What is the significance of the use of parentheses throughout the text, specifically their tendency to echo the previous line? Um, my first edit for this question would be removing throughout the text, because we only have one example here, and, close, and while close reading it, we can't make assumptions about parentheses throughout the text. We're only talking about this one. So I think to include throughout the text, multiple quotes need to be given. But with the one quote we have, we can remove throughout the text. And specifically, their tendency to echo the previous line injects this kind of injects analysis into the question. It's already framing it and giving us a lens to look through. Um, so I think to make it a better open discussion question, removing that probably. Um, so my edited question is, what is the significance of these parentheses in this quote? Um, and to answer it, so the parentheses are around Nasoon, your daughter, um, repeating that phrase from the previous sentence. Um, to me, the parentheses sets it apart, like literally, it has reshaped the quote, and in setting it apart, it's making it important, and making it matter. Um, this quote doesn't have reasons for us for why it matters, but it's kind of blocking that in your mind, of taking this, the repetition, the parentheses, it's saying this is going to be important. This. Which. That's my answer. Um, the next question I'm going to look at is Ashley's. Um, but this is what it means to be civilized. Doing what her betters say she should for the ostensible good of all. About page 53. Knowing what we do about the society in this book and our society in real life, what does it mean to be civilized? Civilized is in quotes. Um, I like this question. I really like it. I think that a question like what does it mean to be civilized typically would be a bit too broad for a close reading question, but the quote that it's paired with literally contains the definition given in the text of civilized. Um, so that makes it appropriate. Um, I don't know enough about close reading on whether or not adding the, you know what, I'm going to be confident. I don't think that um, adding the context of real life versus fictitious life is helpful in close reading, except for, you know what, I don't know. I don't know if knowing what we do about society in this book and our society in real life is beneficial or a hindrance to the question. Um, my initial instinct is that it adds too many layers, and I think that the question, what does it mean to be civilized posed without them, is just as powerful and open. So I'm going to answer that. What does it mean to be civilized? Um, the text is doing like a, like a dodgy thing here. It's the italicization of civilized that gets me and it changes the tone of the rest of the sentence. It's a bit tongue in cheek, a bit giving an underlying disagreement um, because civilized literally slants and angles and adjusts our, like, way we're reading it. So we have to pay attention, and then we're paying attention to the rest of it. And in adding that slant, well, the text says on the page, doing what her better says she should for the sensible good of all, 
with the civilized in italics before it, it adds a double layer to that, that perhaps, well, that this isn't the whole truth or isn't the truth, that there's something off about it, literally. And the next question is Sam's. The shout dies in his throat as he falls, flash frozen, the last of his warm breath hissing out through clenched teeth and frosting the ground as you steal the heat from it. Page 115. What is the symbolism of one being able to control heat or energy? Um, so my first edit for this one is for the specific question. I don't know if this is the best quote. Um, it's what we got, so we're gonna work with it. Um, I think that symbolism of control and heat and energy is really dependent on the motifs set up in the novel, the characters, everything. So I think just using one passage to answer that broad of a question isn't useful. Um, but I think if the question was narrowed down, such as what is the symbolism of controlling heat and energy in this passage, it's probably easier just adding that narrow, narrower lens to focus on the passage. Um, to answer the question, what does controlling heat and energy symbolize within this passage? I would also tack onto there if it symbolizes anything. Um, so in this passage, there's a lot of negative words. Um, dies, hissing, clenched, steel, kind of relating this encounter. And to me that attaches a negativity to the control of heat and energy and attaches this tense unbalance to it with the use of negativity. And there's a couple nice words in here, like warm, I think frosting is a nice word, um, but they're massively outweighed by the negative words. And I think that in that, the symbolism becomes negative and I don't even know if symbolism is the best word for what I'm talking about, but the attachment to the power becomes negative. Uh, this is going on like eight minutes, so I'm going to go and I will see, well, I won't see ya, but I'll read your stuff tomorrow.